buckled up. Okay, so let's go. Let me uh, go here and think uh, where do I have those examples. Okay, I think uh, I can close all of these uh, files and then I go to memory and I won't go over those lectures again so I'll just kind of like just show you about the pointers, right? So let me see, this is references, so not what we want, a dynamic memory. This is probably what we want here. Yeah, okay, so we know that a pointer can hold the address of a variable. We know that. And we can reassign the pointer to point to different variables. We cannot do that with a reference, but for now we're going to put references on, we're going to table references. We're just going to focus on pointers. So here I say I have a pointer to num and then I create new memory, dynamic memory. Uh, an integer with initial value five. So this here is created on the heap. So if I go here, let me see, where did I have this guy? So five would be on the heap and then there would be a variable with the address of five on the stack. Okay, so that's what we're doing. When we create memory, manually or with naked or raw pointers, legacy pointers, we are responsible for deleting the memory. And then we are responsible for making sure that that pointer points to nothing, just to safeguard ourselves from issues, okay? Okay, so everyone understands this, that with this syntax here, you can create memory and uh, we use it Remember, we have to use the dereference operator, the asterisk, to access the value of the pointer. Once we are done using it, we have to clear it out from memory. And then once we uh, delete it from memory, then just to be safe, we point to null, zero, or the null pointer. In this case, we point it to null. Why this here? Just in case later on down here, I mistakenly try to access num, then C++ is like, oh, this is pointing to, to zero, right? So, and as a safeguard, some developers uh, check like if num not equal to zero or not equal to zero also means to null pointer or to null, then we know that it's a valid pointer. And then in, in the co in the conditional structure, we try to do something with the pointer. And if it's zero, then we know we can't use it because it's not a valid pointer, okay? So everyone's good there. Uh, I have a question. I uh, we we have run uh, the pointer uh, in the stack only store in the stack only. So it's how it can be delete. It's it delete automatically after uh, it uh, exit from the function right or from man. The unique the pointer. pointer we, yeah. Yeah, the pointer then, so for example, the, the pointer num equal emphasize num, something like that, is stored in the stack only? This one? No, no, the, the, the one we, we learned regularly, regularly from the beginning of the just regular pointer, or I guess. A regular? It's not dynamic. Uh, yeah, the, um, like in it? the regular. Yeah, uh, in Revelation, we learn like uh, num pointer equal emphasize num, some kind of like that, yeah. That one, int num, or? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, and then we uh, we declare the num pointer equal emphasize num, ref, uh, equal like reference to num. Yeah, so, so a pointer can point to a stack variable. So this here, is a stack variable. So yeah. if we create a pointer that points to num1, we're not acquiring 
dynamic memory. Yeah, that's what I mean. So how it's, can it be deleted? Just delete it automatically or so, we don't need to uh so to if, you let me, if you let me answer, then I can answer your question, right? So so if we have a pointer that points to num one, it's not pointing to dynamic memory. So num one will be eliminated from memory by the C runtime. And so will the pointer because there's no dynamic memory involved. Okay, so we don't have to worry about managing memory for stack variables or pointers that point to stack variables. C manages that for us. Once we start creating dynamic memory, like in line nine, C will not help us. We have to make sure we delete memory and then we have to just be safe and point to nothing, right? Point zero means point to nothing. So to to re answer your question, yes, C will eliminate the memory or clear the memory for stack variables and pointers that point to stack variables. We don't have to worry about deleting that pointer. If we try to delete it, C will tell us like uh Invalid delete, like this is not pointing to dynamic memory. So, we don't usually use uh, that kind, right? We usually use the dyna uh, dynamic, uh, that me dynamic memory pointer and uh, uh, smart pointer only. Uh, in which case, we use the, the first one. I mean, the one stored in the stack, yeah, only. Okay, ask again. Uh, you know, uh, so in which case we use the the pointer you store in the stack only, not the dynamic or the the smart pointer. So when do we use a stack pointer that points to a stack variable? Right, right. Yeah, when we use that, like just for simple uh, program or usually, usually uh, you use pointers to deal with dynamic memory most of the time, like a larger percent of the time. When I showed you that example, it was just to show you that a pointer can point to another variable. Like, for example, a pointer can point to a vector, right? And C++ manages the memory for vectors. So, so in that case, we can point to a stack variable. Uh, but most of the time when you use pointers, it'll be to deal with dynamic memory. This right here is not the recommended way of working with dynamic memory anymore in C++. This is the recommended way since 2010 in modern C++. This is a recommended way to work with dynamic memory because it's less error prone. Why? Because it was written by some of the best programmers in the world. So we use that you know, and then we leverage our knowledge and behind the scenes, they're taking care of all the memory management for you. If you're a Java user, a C Sharp user and a Python user, in essence, you are using smart pointers. When you use a list or a string or, or a dictionary. They don't call them smart pointers, but in essence, like that's what you're implicitly working with. Remember in Java, you don't have to delete memory, like Java takes care of all that for you. And so does uh, C sharp, you know, with some exceptions. C lends itself to showing us how they create this stuff so that we can learn memory management concepts, right? So. Okay. Yes, thank you. Again? Thank you, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so. Let me um, make sure. Okay, so I just talked about pointers again, making sure that you all understand that. So now I'll talk about another concept that'll eventually lead us again into Let me look at this agenda just to make sure. Uh... 
Okay. So I'll for now that's all I want to say about pointers, okay? I'll go into into arrays. So what is an array? Right? So if we go back in and look at this, right? So I said that this was a vector or a list of customers, right? A list of customers. If we would open the vector and look into the code, then we would see that the creators of the vector used arrays to create the list. And if you do the same thing in the Python list, something like that was used. Behind the scenes, they, they used arrays. What is an array? So an array So we have the stack here. And we have an array of numbers. Maybe like the number three, the number two, the number 10, and the number one. So notice uh, that is an array, a list of arrays. And if you would see it in the book, the book might show you something like this and say like in memory these guys are like this three two ten one and then that's an array how does an array uh look in code right so let's go and inspect that let me uh i guess i'll save this let me close this I think at work they're doing some kind of upgrade. So that's all those messages you see popping up or testers checking their applications and they're working. So. Okay, so include uh, IOStream. Uh, void use stack array. So then we go to the CPP. Include uh, arrays, uh, arrays men header. This is a free function, okay? So these are back to free functions. We're not working with the classes right now, so this is a free function. And then uh, we create an array and we use it, right? So let's go here. Let me get that example. And to save time, I'll copy and paste, right? Because I don't have a lot of time left today. So let's walk through this example here. Uh, so let's make sure we say using stat c out here. Okay. So we have a constant auto size three. So meaning we have an integer name size with initial value three and it's read only. And then we are like, okay, let's create a list, old school list, an array with three elements. And uh, this curly brace here means initialize all the values to zero, okay? So we go back here and uh, we map that code here. So I'll eliminate this one, okay? So we will see uh, zero, zero, zero. And uh, this is the int nums of size array. So notice like bracket means like create a list of integers of size three. One, two, three, zero, zero, zero. So let's go to main and call include arrays mem use stack array and let's run it run in terminal
So, so now start thinking, oh, the vector that you raise. So, so now we're going on to that path so that we, we're going to learn the fundamentals of how lists were created, right? The first step in doing that is understanding what an array is. So we created an array, so let's look at that code like this. Create a list of integers, legacy integers, or an array of size 3. This means initialize them to 0, and then we loop through them. And notice that we get 0, 0, 0, right? So if we eliminate the curly brace and we run again, Yeah, Windows takes a little longer to compile. So notice whatever value is in the block of memory that's granted to us is what we output, right? So we get a block of memory, and uh, this was the last value in there, this was the last value in there, this was the last value in there, meaning we do not initialize the value. So whatever values were in that block of memory is what we get. So we always want to make sure that we initialize them to zero. Why? Because we're working with numbers and usually like we initialize them to zero. Once we do that, then we're good. Okay, so while that builds, I'll try it. I'll go on to the next example. So in, uh, in legacy programming, uh, when they wanted to, I'm talking 70s, 80s, right? Before, before like the sophisticated vectors and lists came about. When developers had to work with different data types, they would have to create different arrays. Like, for example, the array for the number of months and then the array for the name of the number of months. So uh, it would go something like this, array months. And then I'll go to the CPP and I will copy that code uh, to save time because I'm running short on time here. So this is what I'm talking about here. So they go here. And then we create two different arrays. So we create, I'm just de dealing with three, three months, okay? So we create a month numbers array of size three and we initialize the values to one two, and three. Afterward, we create an array of strings or a list of strings, legacy uh, array. We name it month names of size three, and we initialize the values to Jan, Feb, and Mar, okay? We iterate the two lists at the same time, and we'll display the number and the month next, next to them, okay? So let's actually, uh, before we can do that, we have to go to main, and we have to call array months, right? So we go here and then we say array months and let's go here and let's run it so notice we have one jan two feb three more right so so this is what developers had to deal with in the 70s and 80s back in the day, right? Fortunately, like as uh, programming languages evolved, uh, this got better. Okay, so we have arrays. How do they relate to pointers? Okay, so we have an array. How do they relate to pointers? And once we find that relationship, then we can be like, oh, so if they're related to pointers, we can create dynamic memory on the heap for arrays. Yes, that's what we're shooting for, right? So let me go to the header. And we say void arrays and pointers. Again, remember, this: these are not class functions. They are free functions. <clears throat> so we go here. And for now, I'll just type this code here. Okay, so we have this code. So again, we have an array of numbers of size 
three. We initialize the values to one, two, and three. And then I have C out numbers. I want to see what that displays. And then I want to get a pointer to numbers. And then I want to display the pointer to see like what I get as an output, okay? So let's run this example. So I have to go to main and then I have to call arrays and pointers. So I call arrays and pointers. And let's run it. Again, why are we going through this? We're looking under the hood, so we're learning about legacy list or arrays. So we did that. Now we are trying to see the relationship between arrays and pointers, okay? So notice, I get an address. Okay, let's look at the code. So I have array size, one, two, three, three elements. I say C out numbers. Hmm, what the heck? It displays an address. And then I say, okay, let me create a pointer to numbers. And I display it, and it also displays an address. So if it displays an address, what if I dereference the address, meaning get the value that that pointer is pointing to? And let's see what I get. So let me do that. So notice, I get the addresses, but then when I dereference the pointer, it displays a one. So it, so a pointer, the name, I mean the name of an array is the pointer to the first element of our list. Assuming this is one, two, and three. So can I say, Pointer plus plus, and will that display the number two for me? One, two. Hmm. Can I say pointer plus plus and will it point to three? It does. So a pointer is the name of the array, right? So here we say see our numbers displays an address. Why do we know it's a pointer? Because pointers work with addresses. Okay. How does uh, dereferencing the pointer help us understand that? Well, once we dereference a pointer, it points to value one. We increment the pointer, it points to value two, and then, or to number two, I mean, and then one more time, and it points to the element with value three. So we can do that. Okay, questions here? I got one more example and then uh, there'll be a class assignment. So one more example after this. I confuse a little bit. That's so, good. So <laughs> uh, pointer, pointer with the uh, after uh, the address uh, on the, the left and a plus plus is mean like the value plus one or that's the next element in the array. This one here. Uh, like forty, yeah. Yeah, we're just incrementing the pointer, so we can assume that behind the scenes, C++ is doing some man, math to jump to the next address. So the next element in the array, right? Yep. The next it's one. not mean like 1 plus 1 equal 2, right? So if oh. we change uh, like 32 with the different value, like 1, 4, 6, so it will be like 4. No, no, it's doing memory addition, right? So this could be 2, 4. Yeah, yeah, it's late. Yes. So, so to your question, when we say plus plus, 
C++ knows that integers are stored in four bytes, so then it jumps ahead four bytes in memory. So it's not it's not doing one at a time, right? So let's run this again. It'll point to the next memory block. Right, so it's still 246. So assuming this was like like x x100, and then we do pointer plus plus, then it goes to x104. Pointer plus plus, then it goes to x108. Why by fours? Because integers are stored in in four byte memory addresses, right? So uh, one more uh, example, and then we'll call it quits, and then there's a class assignment. So let me go here, and this simply how to iterate and pass a, an array as a pointer, right? So if a pointer points to an array, then that means we can use a pointer as a parameter for a function. So here we have a pointer to nums, right? So we'll see this develop. Let me go here at this piece here, and then let's go to main. And let's go ahead and call display array. Uh, obviously, we need to create an array here. So I will go here and copy an array. Oops, I went to the wrong one. Here. I'll copy this one. Go to main. Yeah, I didn't mean to run it, so it's going to error out. So. Okay, uh, we create that. We pass numbers, and then we pass size, right? So a pointer, I mean, a, a, an array doesn't know its size. So anytime we use it as a parameter, we also have to pass the size. Hello? Okay, let me mute this person. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, explain this again. So we create a pointer. We create a an array, okay. We knew from the pre we know from the previous example that the name of the array is a pointer. So meaning now we can say a pointer to nums, and then we pass in an array, and C++ knows that it points to the first element of an array, and then we have to pass the size because an array does not know its size. So we always have to pass the size along to the function. So let's go ahead and run this example. And notice it also displays 246. So we go into main and revisit that code again. What did we do? We created an array. We passed it in as a parameter and we passed the size. The parameter type that we use is a pointer to nums, right? I mean, a pointer to int, right? So, so at least now we understand the relationship with, between pointers and array. In the next class, we will continue I will have one more example with uh, arrays, and then we'll jump into arrays uh, and dynamic memory. Okay, so there's an assignment. Let me stop this.